My deepest respect to God who is present in our midst. To our apostolic administrator, Your Excellency Archbishop Paul Martin. On behalf of the Tongan Catholic Community of Christchurch, I welcome you to our Eucharistic celebration today. May it be a source of blessings for each and every one of us. As we celebrate Mass on this fifth Sunday of the Church's year, we renew our faith in God through the suffering and death of Jesus for our sakes. We believe that God raised Jesus from the dead and that our sufferings in this life, of which our liturgical readings speak, lead all of us to resurrection with God. We thank God for His gracious plan of salvation. Please stand for the opening day. sooner, but it's really great to, as we begin this year of 2021 to place our lives and our work in God's hands to pray uh, peace and good health and blessings on us and on our faith journey. As we begin our Mass, we do what we always do and we place our lives in God's hands. We acknowledge our sins and our need of God's mercy and forgiveness.
forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
his life and what's happened to him. And if you read the book of Job, then you'll know and you'll see that Job did have everything. He had a wife and kids and beautiful uh, lands and he was rich. He was very blessed. And the devil came along to God and said, See, Job, he only loves you because of all the good things that he's got. And so God says to Satan, he says, Okay, take those things away and see what happens. And Job is left with nothing. Absolutely nothing. The first chapter of the book of Job is in Every one dies and all his family are killed and his property is destroyed. It's very depressing. And then Job really does have to work out where he stands in terms of his relationship with God. And he has a good winch about it. We heard about it today. A good winch about his situation. And he really talks to God directly about how hard it is, how hard all this is. But notice... He does not give up on God. He doesn't give up on God. And I think it's really important for us. Because I suspect we tend to keep God out of the struggles and the difficulties of our lives as if like, that stuff's too messy for God. They're not his area. So I'll try and work it out myself. And that's probably the biggest, the most stupid mistake that we make as human beings. Because prayer is communication with God about everything that's going on. Not just the nice things. We need to take our sickness and our addictions and our insecurities and our worries and our frustrations to the Lord in prayer and ask for His help in both. If we sit there praying and we shout at God with all these wonderful words about how good He is and how wonderful He is, and underneath, we are desperately worried about things, then we aren't being honest with God. Take God to all of the aspects of your life. Ask God for the graces that are linked to your greatest concerns, whatever it is, your lack of patience, your temper, your lust, your greed, your envy, whatever it is, name it and ask for healing from it and for the graces and virtues that counter these things. That's the healing Jesus will bring to us. Just like he healed Peter's mother-in-law in the gospel of her sickness, and all those other people who crowd around the door, he wants to cure us too. But we need to ask. We need to stand at that door believing that it's possible, not giving up on them. That's God's great gift to us, to you and to me. The Son and the Holy Spirit that we receive in which enable us to live in a relationship with him. <coughs> so when we might be tempted to think that not being encumbered by believing in God and all of this stuff would make life so much easier, imagine that it's a relationship like the way you have or you might have had with your parents. It'll be good and wonderful sometimes. Annoying sometimes, frustrating at times. But how much less would we be if we didn't have, didn't have that relationship at all? And so too for God. God doesn't just solve all our problems. Jesus walks with us in our sufferings and in our difficulties because. He experienced and went through the same himself. He went through the agony of the cross and he went through all of the trials that happened before that. Jesus knows what it is to suffer and he will be with us as we go through our lives and through our moments of suffering and trial as well. That's the God that we have. It's not, he's not a sugar daddy God. 
which gives us even further and helps us live in some sort of Disney lane. But a God who gives us the freedom to choose and the freedom to respond to his invitation and share in his life. We are the ones who say no to all the way for a no God. Well, never does. He only ever wants us to be in full relationship with Him, with all the realities of our lives. There are ups and there are downs. Pray hard that you will have the courage and the grace to stick to this journey and to be open to the grace of God working in your lives. Excellency, Archbishop Paul Martin, I am humbly honored to present to you the members who are chosen to lead the Catholic Tongan community of the Diocese of Christ Church.
Loving God, we thank you for your gifts and graces to us and to these people who have taken on these ministries for the sake of your church, for the Tongan community and for the spread of the gospel. Be with them as they carry out the living of these ministries. Bless them in their lives that they may witness to you by their words and actions. Guide them as they do their work in this community so that the gospel may be spread, that people will see in us and in them your Holy Spirit and desire to come to you. Bless these in each one of us this day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
to us to ask for the things we need. So we do that now.
have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of God.
through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
refrain from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let Satan know, I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine all the time. Thank you. Blow it out. Now you can watch, wait till you see it, yeah? Don't forget to count it to you from the back, yeah?
government of you to like your child, but we know you love us. And thank you for that. And uh, we all welcome you, Thomas Community, welcome you to the home after that, to have a cup of coffee and a cup of tea. We please put another hand, big hands to acknowledge and welcome our issue for you. Yes, uh, in my, I was born in Hastings, if anyone's ever been to the North Island. Uh, and when I was born in Hastings, Hastings was part of the Archdiocese of Wellington. And then in 1980, they chopped the country up and they created the Diocese of Hamilton out of Auckland and the Diocese of Palmerston North out of Wellington. And so I, Hastings then became part of the Diocese of Palmerston North. But in my life, I, uh, I taught for... Uh, eight years and I was the principal at St. Patrick's College Wellington uh, and I also studied at Victoria University so Wellington is not a foreign place to me uh, and I'd have to, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a hurricane supporter <laughs> but I have, just before Christmas we had a function at work and, and all the different departments at work came up and presented these very nice gifts to me someone gave me a Fitbit, they must have thought I was getting fat and needed to do some exercise and another group presented me with a Crusaders jersey. So I held it up against myself and said, oh, it burns. But uh, I had to go to Rebel Sport and change it for a slightly downscale Crusaders uh, jersey. You know, the purpley, the darker one with a little bit of purple, not so red, because I thought I might get attacked if I wear that in Wellington. <laughs> but uh, it was a very big surprise to me to be asked to take over from Cardinal John when that time comes. It wasn't what I thought was going to happen in my life, but even bishops have to do as they're told. And there's something about being open to the Spirit and what God asks of you. So I am sorry to be going, uh, but I know that this is what God is obviously wants, and so I will do that. But I will always uh, have a deep affection and care for this diocese, uh, for the plans and what we've begun, and to hopefully see that grow into really wonderful fruit. And that I tell you, the rest of the country are all looking to see what we do here and how it goes. So, which is both uh, great and the slightly scary. So uh, let's, let's show them the possibilities of that. And the fact that for the witnesses, I said to you in the sermon at the beginning of your papers, and, and as a, within the Tongan community, but also beyond that, it's really good. But I was very moved, very lovely scene, very moved. And I know for a couple of years I lived in Italy. And so it was a great experience, but uh, you know what your own home feels like when you live in another home. And you, and so I understand for you when you sing in Tongue, and I'm really sorry I can't speak in Tongue for you, but what that means and all the connections. So it's very lovely to be able to celebrate the liturgy with you here and the very beautiful singing, and, and that's prayer and praise. And I know it also takes a lot of work, so, so thank you for that. And the only other thing is, it seems that when you move to other places, you change, because I think Sister now moved to Auckland and got you here. <laughs> so, I'm wondering what might happen to mine when I get to Wellington. So if you don't recognise me next time, it'll be, because you can get new here when you move. So, thank you. Bless, blessings to you all. Uh, young people, thank you for singing. Very beautiful. Um, and I look for the, um, our little, and uh, let our light shine. And, our world really needs to hear the good news of Christ and for us to live it as well. It's hard, it's not easy, but when we support one another and do it together, it's a wonderful life. So thank you and blessings to you. So let's stand. <coughs> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.